you've now seen sort of an overview of the contents of the solar system, their mass, density, and locations. So how did this all come to be? Um, astronomers try to come up with a model for how the solar system formed in order to understand what we see out there today. So in general, the solar system history goes like this. Um, we start with a huge cloud of gas and dust. Um, it's rotating just ever so slightly in space. And as this solar nebula um, has little fluctuations in temperature and density, they occur randomly. Eventually, one of those triggers the collapse of this giant cloud. And as it collapses, it um, shrinks down and flattens. So it's kind of like if you have an ice skater who's um, rotating and they pull in their arms, then they rotate faster. Um, so it, it rotates faster and faster as it collapses. It spins up faster and faster. And if, if you've ever been you know, on a merry-go-round, you know that when objects are spinning quickly, um, things tend to be sort of pushed out to the edge. So that causes all of the matter to be pressed out um, from rotational flattening and kind of start to take on more of a pancake shape. Most of the mass ends up at the center and that's where our sun forms. But the rest of it has various um, stuff throughout the solar disk, which is what we now call this. And the planets start to form as material condenses out of that solar disk as it cools down. So solid particles condense. Um, icy particles can exist far from the sun, whereas nearby the sun, they stay evaporated. And so some of this is related to the compositions of our planets, as you talked about in the pre-class questions. Um, the gas was not able to condense on the terrestrial worlds for a couple of reasons. One, because it was too hot to condense and then two, because the, the terrestrial worlds weren't massive enough to attract lots of gas via their gravity. So both of those were really good answers and uh, most of you came up with one or both of those, so that's awesome. Okay, so the evidence for some of this formation model are that planets orbit in the same plane. So that's why we uh, believe that the solar nebula flattened into a disk. It's also consistent with the physics that we understand from studying other objects. All right, so how did planetesimals form and planets form from just, just those you know, bits of material that had condensed out in the solar disk? Well, um, planetesimals are the name that we give to the small chunks that start to um, kind of agglomerate around each other from those little bits of condensed material. And so if we have two planetesimals near each other in space, um, based on what we've talked about so far in class, how do they interact with each other? And I'm seeing vast majority of votes for option number two. Yeah, gravity is gonna pull those planetesimals together, right? There's a force of gravity between every two objects and that tends in free space to just pull objects together. So that's exactly what's gonna happen to our little planetesimals. So as they are gravitationally attracted to each other, they're going to smash together, stick together, and over time, um, attract other planetesimals and other planetesimals and grow into larger and larger objects. So this is how our sort of protoplanets are forming from these little tiny planetesimals. Okay, so another question. Um, hmm, this one's not animated correctly, but I'll ask you anyway. What's the effect that friction has on the temperature of an object? All right, sure. It looks like it's unanimous. Friction makes things warm up, right? If you smash things together hard enough, they're gonna heat up. Um, so because of that, as our planetesimals smash together, stick together, then they warm up more and more. And actually the, the harder that the impact is, the more forceful the impact is, the more the temperature is going to increase. And so for this reason, um, as objects smash together and get larger and larger, they're also heating up. And so some of the material that used to be um, solid or ice is going to melt and become a liquid. Okay, so like I mentioned, differentiation is this process where uh, you create layers inside 
the terrestrial planets in, in the cores of the gas giants. So basically this is, if you have a molten planet, then the heavy material sinks down. And as an example, this is a figure from chapter eight, which we'll read soon. The inner and outer cores of the earth are made of heavier metals, whereas earth's mantle and crust are made of rocky materials. So those very dense metallics, when the earth was molten, sunk down into its core while the lighter materials floated to its surface. So this has happened for all of the terrestrial planets, the cores of the Jovian worlds, and also some of the dwarf planets are differentiated as well. Okay, so when differentiation occurs, what happens to the overall density of terrestrial planets, the average density? Okay, I'm seeing the most votes for option number two that the density of terrestrial planets would stay the same as they differentiate. We can kind of draw different boundaries, right? We can kind of say, let's look at the boundary that goes around the whole planet. And in there, the mass is not changing. It's not leaving the planet and the volume is not changing. Therefore, the density isn't changing. But if we draw you know, some boundary on the inside of the planet and we were gonna measure here, then the density inside would be going up and the density outside of that bubble would be going down, but the total density of the entire planet would be staying the same. Yep, so I like that explanation. Thank you for that. All right, so the overall average density isn't changing, but it's really important that the, the materials are now layered within the planet. And this leads to really cool effects, which we'll talk about as we go into detail on every single planet. We talked about lots of different objects. All of these objects are flying around in the early solar system, colliding with each other. Which of these objects do you think is least likely to be differentiated? I am seeing the vast majority of responses for choice number one. The asteroid's not gonna be differentiated because of its small size. And I guess, um, why would the small size of an asteroid make it less likely to be differentiated? Does anyone have an idea for why that would be? Okay, yeah, that's a really great idea. So the differentiation would be maybe the most pronounced in objects that have more gravity to, to cause the differentiation to happen. Yes, that is one reason. I have another reason I would expect small objects not to be differentiated. And this is kind of a chicken or the egg problem because if an object is small, it's, it obviously didn't attract lots of other objects to it, right? It didn't become a protoplanet or a real planet. Um, and so because it, it's small, because it didn't have collisions and because it didn't have collisions, it didn't heat up and become differentiated. The asteroids are generally not differentiated. Some of the largest asteroids are differentiated, but we call those dwarf planets. Okay, so if I look at all of the um, stuff in the solar system, the things that are basically leftover planetesimals are dwarf planets, moons, asteroids, and KBOs, the comets, and the rocks and dust. So all of this stuff um, is the leftovers of planet formation. So what is the evidence that we have that this actually happens? Um, well, we know that the planets are composed of similar materials in similar regions. So we know that, you know, the planetesimals that formed the terrestrial planets were mostly rocky, whereas the planetesimals that formed the cores of the gas giants were made of rock and ice. We also know that uh, planets are differentiated, meaning that the centers of them tend to be more dense than the outside. Uh, and you can imagine you have a, um, a body that has become liquefied, the more dense material is going to sink down to the center. So that differentiation helps to um, confirm our, our guess that, that planets are composed of these planetesimals sticking together. Um, we also know that there are leftovers still. So the leftovers for this process are the asteroids and the KBOs. Uh, and also the age of objects in the solar system is all about the same. We'll talk about a couple of different ways that we measure those ages later on. Um, but the theory of planetesimals says that all of those planetesimals would have formed at the same time, and we can actually confirm that. 